<laughs> All right, now, now let's shift into hard mode. Matthew 16, 24 and 25. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is man profited? If he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul, mm -hmm. or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? That's right. If we desire to be a follower and disciple of Jesus Christ, there are three things that he requires us to do. One, deny ourselves. Yes. This is a tough one. It is so tough to just abandon our will to pick up a greater will. Wow. We have a tendency, and uh, we have a tendency as human beings. Uh, to, of making plans for our lives, we plan out what to focus our major in, in college, what career we will go into after college, etc. We have the tendency of putting God in the back seat when we have, uh, when we take full control of what we major in and what God, what per career we, we pursue. Yes, God let, does let us have our desires sometimes uh, for His glory, but He really desires us for us to let His will be done over our will. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And sometimes he fulfills our desires in, in, on the way. He wants, he wants to be the God of our lives, but he can't be all that. All that he can be if we do not let him have control of our lives. Right. We need to stop putting God in the back seat, and we need to let God be God. We need to let God be in the driver's seat of our lives. Amen. We need, do you ever really let anyone drive your, your new car and... Uh, <laughs> you know, <new> car. No. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I cannot trust anyone to drive my, my new 06 uh, Honda Accord. I'd be a nervous wreck. <laughs> I'd be like, <laughs> but the thing is, uh, but the thing is, we, we turn into a nervous wreck when we let other people have um, have control of our car. But God is God. He, he, he ain't human. We, we can let God have the steering wheel of our lives. We, he is the faithful God. Amen. We are in good hands. Yes. Just let God be God. Amen. Just God, trust God with the steering wheel of our lives. Yes. Yes. Number two, taking up our cross. Yes. This is another hard one. Yeah. The cross represents death. Yeah. It represents the necessity of total commitment. Mm -hmm. it, it's kind of funny when you see people wearing the cross uh, on on a necklace or, or something like that. I actually, I actually wore one back th back in the day. I mean, I mean, I mean, I just felt conviction and broke it and just put the uh, metal piece. In. I actually have the metal piece in here. But anyway, it, it's something easy to wear a cross as a piece of jewelry. We just do not think of how heavy the burden of the cross really is. This may not be accurate, but I, I mean, I just Googled this, so I may be wrong, but the cross that Jesus Christ was hung upon weighed at least 300 pounds. The cross beam alone was about 75 to 125 pounds. Just that cross piece alone is heavy. Imagine having to carry the whole 300 pounds. It will take, co it will take commitment to do that. Living for God is being a follower in the and disciple of Jesus Christ, it takes commitment. Many are called to commit, but few are chosen. Right. Few are willing to do that. Wow. Okay. We have always had commitment issues. The children of Israel, they had commitment issues and, and when, uh, when Moses was up on Mount Sinai for 40 days. They turned to a golden calf. We need to commit our hearts, our souls, our minds unto the Lord, and he shall establish them and bring it to pass in the promised land. Number three, follow him. This sounds so simple on paper, but the, rea but the reality proves otherwise. Luke 9, 57 through 62. And it came to pass that as, he, as they went in the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. And Jesus said unto him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath not a place to, where, to lay his head. And he said unto another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me to go, to first to go and bury my father. Jesus said unto him, Let the dead bury their dead. But go thou and preach the kingdom of, of God. 
And another said, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go bid them for a farewell, which are at my home at my house. Jesus said unto him, No man, having put his hand to the plow, looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. Jesus and his disciples encounter three potential disciples. The first was eager. He was eager, I'll give him that, but he did not count the cost of following him. It seemed the cost was too great. We didn't hear much from him after that. The second was to delay to fulfill family obligations. Jesus' calling did not take pre precedence. So he was eliminated. Yep. The third was not yet ready to let go of his former life. Jesus finishes the, with a parable. No man having uh, his hand on the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. We must not look back. That's right. If you think following Jesus and being a disciple is easy, you are dead wrong. That's right. That's right. Sorry to tell you, it, it is a lifelong fight to be a follower and, to, yes, and disciple of Jesus Christ. We have all of hell fighting every, fighting us every step of the way. Right. When we are following after God, we will be at odds with the world. Right. You cannot follow after God and be aligned with the things in the world and that go against God's holiness. A double-minded man, double man is unstable in his ways. The hardest thing about following after God is the world is going to put a stigma on us. And we will hate it, but it hated for his name's sake. We will be called holier than thou, judgmental, intolerant, bigot, just because we disagree with the values of this world when it comes to hot button issues such as abortion and sexual orientation and equality. We tend to beat around the bush too much. We just got to make a stand and draw a line in the sand, or we will end up falling for it. We are meek and humble like lambs, but we have a dual nature by the, that the Holy Ghost gives us. We have the fullness of, of, of lions to roar for what God stands for. We need to stop sticking our heads in the sand and roar like a lion. <coughs> Matthew 10, 22. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endureth to the end shall be saved. Let me lighten things up a bit. If we are hated by this world, we have the church body with, the, with us. And God is for us. It, it can't be all that bad. We will be pressed, but God will not let us be crushed. That's if right. we hold on to him, that is the thing. We will be persecuted, but God will not leave us for abandoned. If we are hated by this world, we, will, we, we are still in good company. That's because right. the best company is God and his church. Right. So we are in the best company yes. if we are hated, uh, hated by the world. That's right. Erica.